All right, so usually I make videos in a different room of mine, but I'm painting that room right now. But I want to, I left a comment for someone, and I felt horrible because this person has been the victim of gang stalking. And I want to give you a very descriptive uh, definition and what the origin of it is, is and such, because it's hard to get information on that, and there's a reason that it is hard to get information on that. It's because it... Uh, is run by sheriff's departments and actually funded by government agencies also uh, to do this 24-7 surveillance. It started out to be against, uh, let's say people they suspect of terrorism or if somebody's missing and they think a, a husband has uh, killed the wife or something, uh, they can surveil them and, and do different things. But this is different because they're specifically psychologically targeting people to break them down and it actually brings a lot of people harm and some people commit suicide from that. So I'm going to go through, but this man that had a video on it, he was really concerned and I felt horrible for him and his mind's going uh, all directions and things. So what I did is I left a comment um, for him, but I felt horrible for him so I'd be able to give him the proper information to help him get through this. Because for some people, it's really hard. I was lucky I was tipped off by some people that actually do it. Uh, well, by one person. So I'm going to read uh, what I had left for him uh, in the comment section. Gang stalking is coordinated by the Sheriff's Department. A confidential informant told me he was an informant, and I never knew that. And this was a friend of mine. Uh, he felt bad because he told me that I was placed on the list. He told me because they put me on the list to be a targeted individual 24-7 surveillance after I turned in a dirty cop. The confidential informant, my friend, told me their ultimate goal is to trigger you to get you to commit suicide after they stalk you and isolate you. They will break in your house and even do things to double your bills, etc. to also target, so they can also target your finances. They are doing things to systematically make you waste money fixing, replacing, and spending on things you shouldn't have to because um, they sabotage things. Uh, my friend had said at their Masonic Lodge, many of the Masons there were on the list to stalk and harass people also, but the most people that they use are the confidential informants uh, that do surveillance and other things for the uh, police department, um, and you, like controlled buys and different things like that. But there's a difference between surveillance and harassment. This they want you to know, and they want to harass you and psychologically come against you. Um, when they could get someone to finally commit suicide, he said that they would throw parties and celebrate that like it was a big joke. It wasn't as bad for me because I knew what was going on since my friend had thankfully tipped me off to what was occurring and the sheriff's department, the different individuals that were doing this. Uh, within one month of him telling me that I was on the list and that they were coming at me, they found him dead from a diabetic thing. He was 36 years old and his name was Josh. That's a pretty odd coincidence. Uh, your vehicle is the biggest thing they'll mess with. They will do a thanks to have your check engine lights come on, scratch the vehicles constantly, break things that you've just had repaired, uh, put like small little cuts in the upholstery or on the dash and little things, you know, cut with a razor like on your radio into the plastic and things like that. Uh, one thing they loved doing to my vehicle was cutting the steering wheel with knives. I'd go into a store and come out and go to turn my wheel and then you'd have cut up areas on the wheel so they could let me know that they broke in my car just to mess with me. And I did file police reports on this. This isn't something weird. It's actually documented and stuff. And I did that even knowing law enforcement and, and their informants and different people involved in this program were doing it. Uh, but just to get it documented. Uh, but I knew it wouldn't go anywhere. And it was funny too, even when I'd call in to document this. And they, they also killed my children's pet rabbits out of lock cages and many other things. Broke into my house and did lots of things. But I would call to file a, a report just to get it documented. And, you know, it would take like six hours for anyone to show up. And it's not that they were busy. It's because I was hated. You know, I'm on the list. So it would take just a super long time. Then they'd show up with somebody that's like equivalent to like a uh, parking ticket uh, cop. And, you know, it wouldn't go anywhere. I think that at one point, uh, I can't remember if the animal was killed or what. But, you know, I wanted to show that there was a little bit of an escalation there. 
Uh, yeah, I think that's when the, uh, they kill the animals and stuff. Um, I filed police reports, but I knew law enforcement uh, was the ones doing it so they wouldn't go anywhere, blah, blah, blah. Even when I filed the reports, they weren't even busy. Uh, I just talked about that. Uh, they've slashed at least, I would say at least six or seven tires, motorcycle tires, um, do different things. If I parked my car like in a parking uh, uh, ramp and go downtown and stuff and leave it there if I had some drinks or something, I would come back and not only would my battery be dead, they would actually kill the battery, drain the battery, but then they would unhook the battery cables from the battery to make it obvious that it wasn't just an accident, you didn't just leave your lights on. No, we actually drained your battery and, and unhooked uh, the cables from the battery. It was pretty pathetic. Uh, let's see, they'd break in my house and let uh, some of the pets out of the cages so I'd come home and here's these, you know, closed up cages and I've got animals running around the floor. They thought that was pretty funny. Uh, you know, I did put uh, some surveillance cameras out that just break the cameras. Uh, or I'd come in the house and I had my daughter, I was out of state for a time and some things had happened and I had to go back and look at the cameras. And uh, of course they deleted entire like months of footage and uh, you know, that's when the camera magically went out too. One of the cameras, there was eight. Uh, a girl in the bar uh, tipped me off on more than one occasion and more than one uh, different girl uh, that they'd approach them in the bathroom and those people would tell them that they should stay away from me because I'm violent and one uh, person even told them that I was a child molester and I was a felon. I'm not a felon, I'm not anything, you know. But they would tell them these lies to uh, slander your name uh, to get people to hate you so that way they're easier manipulated too if they want to use them against you they think they're actually doing a good thing for their community um, I would have conversations with people and everything was fine and then as soon as I was gone for a little bit go to the bathroom or whatever uh, or go do something you know it wasn't uncommon that when I'd return or see them again or things like that the atmosphere completely changed and that person wanted nothing to do with me any longer because of those, uh, the people that would talk to them about me. Uh, one of the biggest tools, they'll use family members against you too, but what they'll do is if you talk about gang stalking or surveillance and things, they'll say like, hey, we're worried, you know, we want to investigate this, but we know he's just, you know, delusional or demented. And, you know, they'll make up lies and they'll try and actually get your family member to be part of this too, to come against you. And the family members, a lot of times love you and care about you, think you might be a little bit off because you're talking about these things and they don't believe that there could be any bad cops or like weird people doing this and that's exactly what's occurring. Uh, and I'll get into in a second about this program because it's actually intended for one thing. So even if you got a hold of some high level people and said, hey, I want you to check this, you know, they're doing this and that to me, then the cops will just lie and say, yeah, we are doing that and we're using this program. But it's because uh, we have reports that he's been speaking to someone that has ties with high-level gang members or, uh, a, 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 you know, a big drug dealer. You know, that's how they cover their tracks. Um, uh, one of the biggest tools they use, like my friend and how they used him, is he was a confidential informant uh, for the sheriff's department. And... Uh, that way those guys were already in place, they already knew surveillance, they already knew how to do controlled buys, they already knew how to how the other people were monitoring them while they were trying to extract information and buy drugs and do these different things. So it's very easy for them because they already have the surveillance to surveil people for drug dealing things like this. The only difference is that is very secretive and quiet and you won't know they're surveilling you. Whereas this is complete harassment and demonic and they want you to know that they're harassing you to psychologically get you to break down and harm yourself and commit suicide. Uh, he said, you know, when he told me that, I just, uh, he, he told me, he said, you know, I'm worried about you and this and that. And, and these guys have actually, you know, killed people and had people, uh, you know, these people have killed themselves because uh, it had gotten so bad that they took their own lives. And then these people would laugh and high five and they'd actually have a party. And, and there was actually funding for these things when they'd get together um, for doing such a good job and stuff. I mean, it's real sick. Um, uh, let's see. You know, so like, well, let me get to that in a second. Uh, 
The Sheriff's Department is coordinating uh, most every part of it. It was supposed to be used to track psychotic people or pedophiles or actual stalkers, you know, violent people, uh, violent gang members, terrorists, suspected terrorist members, people that come over here. Uh, let's say someone came over from Iran, obviously they're going to surveil them, you know, if they have ties to terrorist organizations and things, and that's how they surveil them. They don't harass them in that sense, though, but they do the same type of surveillance but it's just not the harassing psychological part to get those people uh, to try and harm those people. It's to watch them. Uh, my friend said the Sheriff's Department would even use gas and high-level targets to enter homes while the people were in the homes uh, sleeping. And that was the same type of things they do in like hostage situations. Or I remember there was a case where there was one guy that uh, grabbed a kid and barricaded himself like under the ground in this little thing. And when he went to sleep, they gassed it, entered it, and then they uh, actually killed him. You know, I'm sure they said he reached for his gun, but uh, those are the type of tactics they can use is they can employ gas and things to uh, not only disorient, but actually put you to sleep and then enter while you're actually asleep. And that would be an easy way if they had a hard time towards a person's electronics or uh, encrypted uh, computer systems or things where they needed a physical access, that's where they'd use uh, some of those types of law enforcement tactics. Uh, oh, and then when he was telling me about like going into people's houses when they were sleeping and things like that, and some of these different things they were doing, he got real nervous and, and he just looked at me and his eyes were kind of sad, you know, and he said, uh, he said that, you know, he could be the one that gets targeted for telling me to do this. Before he talked to me too, uh, we were out in the country and he right away uh, pulled the, the batteries out of our cell phones and we went and put them in the car and uh, and uh, you know he wouldn't talk about anything until that was done so then when we went out you know he was all paranoid you know a little nervous to tell me and then he told me but he looked really sad when he told me that he could uh, himself be targeted or hurt for talking about that uh, when he was talking about entering the houses when people were sleeping and things like that he said the surveillance with the targeted individual consisted of law enforcement using the law enforcement tools to track their cell phones and GPS track the vehicles. They'd use stingrays uh, for the cell phones to uh, intercept all the texts and different things and they'd set up a lot of times close to the individual or they would know different people and they'd talk them into and give them payments and things to set up uh, right in that area. But the stingray would, could uh, intercept everything. Uh, GPS track the cars, phones, all that stuff. And then also he said too, like even people's antivirus and stuff, that was a great way for them to track different people through different uh, computers they were using and everything to keep on top of every single bit that was going in and out to know who they're talking to and this and that. So if somebody met somebody online and they're having a great conversation, they're gonna meet up and all of a sudden that person never gets talked to again. You know, a lot of times they intervened on the behalf and talked to the person. And these are, this is a legal process, that's the problem. But the process that they're doing, they're not doing legal parts of it. You know, they're not supposed to, they can surveil you and harass you, but they're not supposed to actually like uh, break things of yours or like kill children's, uh, kill pet animals like mine or uh, cut up my um, steering wheel of things I have documented with the police department. Um, let's see. So basically everything, you know, there's a mirrored way of the different surveillance tools and the ways that they uh, copy your, uh, your phone and stuff is it's actually mirrored. So everything you see, they can see. Every text you send, they get blah, blah, blah. The main goal was to isolate the person and introduce other fake people into their lives that are snitches to help take control of their lives and manipulate those people and to destroy their finances and bring them into a super depression as they'd isolate them in certain ways and use different tactics, uh, they would hope that they would then commit suicide. If someone turns in a cop for police brutality or somebody sleep with a cop's wife, etc., then they can be targeted by this uh, program illegally. But see, they'll say it's legal because like I said, they'll make up an excuse. Oh, that person's been very violent, you know, we're worried about him, he's had psychotic episodes, blah, 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 so they will put him in that uh, category, or they'll come up with a lie like, you know, we believe we're going to investigate because we think he knows this uh, high-level drug dealer, things like that. Uh, 
they'll get false witnesses to lie about that individual so they can uh, put them on the list to be harassed. Uh, it's a funded program and it's pretty very sick individuals. Some of the civilian stalkers are actually thinking they're doing a great service for their public community because they you know, they brainwash themselves, they're retards. So if a cop comes up, hey, I'm officer this and I want to talk to you, we think we have a um, a possible child molester here or a rapist, uh, so could we use uh, your house to place a camera? We'll give you some money and things, but uh, we just, you know, this would be the best way to surveil them. People, oh yes, here you go, you know, that's how stupid people are. Some of the civilian stalkers are actually thinking they're doing a service for the public community. Once they know all of your schedule, they approach people in the areas you most likely go, and those people will think they're helping out the sheriff's department by relating information about uh, you back to them and, and uh, going along with the program. So basically, like I go to the gym, so they'll talk to people in the gym and they'll say like, oh, you know, we think this guy has uh, drugged a girl and, and, and tries to have sex with uh, underage people and, and, you know, or whatever they want to say, he's psychotic, blah, blah, blah. So then these people that are making like minimum wage and stuff, they're more than happy to get a few bucks off the sheriff's department by going along with these lies. So then when you go into the gym, they make sure that there's at least one or two different people to constantly monitor you. You know, going to the gym while you're at the gym, when you leave the gym and things like that to, to also work with the isolation. Um, oh, the funds, he told me that the funds, they provide cash and even gift cards or they cut a check uh, you know, in his case, he, he was a drug addict, and a lot of times he's, you know, they'd give him actually, like, his buddies would give him drugs, you know, because they uh, have full access to the whole sheriff's department things. It's pretty sick. Uh, you know, that would be because they're best friends, and, you know, uh, this isn't legal, and it's not on the books, you know. But, you know, these things would be on the side, you know. And he also was able to sell drugs and never worry about getting caught. They mark these people's license plates too, so cops, if they go up behind them and run a plate, they know they're active in investigations and, you know, doing something for the sheriff's department so they will not touch them. So they can get away with a lot unless they, like, literally, you know, run into a person drunk or something. But other than that, uh, they can get away with a lot of things. Uh, so they can cut a check to any of the civilian stalker snitches. Uh, in the exact same way that they pay their informants to do controlled buys from drug dealers and to start the surveillance and process to arrest them. So, you know, when they're doing controlled buys and they're setting up drug dealers and things, they're doing surveillance on that person and who he's talking to, where the drugs are coming from, who he associates with, what cars he drives, all the same things. But instead of harassment, they're doing this low key and quietly to start a uh, criminal case against them for felony charges and such and the informant is involved in that whole process so the same thing of the stockings exact same thing except they're doing it to harass you and stuff on purpose uh, enormous surveillance would be totally secretive and you'd never know but this is the opposite and it's a psychological warfare that the, the police have nearly militarized it to get individuals to break down and harm themselves through suicide that's what he told me uh, they like to honk their horns or set up car alarms anywhere you go to make you think, uh, to make you know they're there and flash their headlights at you a lot and things like that just to let you know to try and pick at you and things. Uh, I've actually had more than one city cop, sheriff, and state trooper stick their arm out the window, look me right in the eye uh, while they're driving by and go like this, you know, just with the hatred on their face, flip me off. And this happened many times. Uh, let's see. Uh, they use other first responders and all the tools of law enforcement to go against you. And, you know, the targeted specific triangulated ways that they do this is with, you know, anybody. It could be an old lady, this person, that person with five kids, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's all part of a, a network. Um... This is for harassment, but the surveillance tools are the same as if they would use it to watch any target at a high level. So the surveillance part of it, if they wanted to be real sneaky and, like, like I said, they're looking for to watch a suspected terrorist, they would employ these you know, same type of things, but it would be in a, not, a different way than harassment. Uh, but the surveillance and following you and using the tools and, and being able to 
uh, monitor your phone and Stingray and all these different things would be similar. Uh, they truly think it's funny. Uh, and like I said, that my friend told me, warned me because he liked me a lot. You know, we were good friends. I never knew he was an informant. And, uh, you know, this was till, you know, about a month, maybe a month and a half before he died. And uh, he liked me and he knew it wasn't fair. And he was uh, doing this surveillance and stuff himself because he started off doing it to go against like pedophiles and then this and that. So a lot of times people get started and when they're close with the sheriff's department, they'll tell them like, hey, this is pedophiles, this is a violent person, or we're going against this bad gang member that we don't want in our community and blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's when he started, you know, so he started with the right intentions, but then his heart gave in and, you know, he started realizing how bad it really was. But then he was stuck, he was already involved and he didn't want to become a target himself. Uh, so it started out for the pedophiles and all those people, like I say, and then it started uh, with him. It led into, you know, going to anyone would be added to the list that the group had a problem with and didn't like, or someone made complaints against an aggressive cop or whatever, police brutality. Uh, the program is legal as the intentions is, as I said earlier, pedophiles, terrorists, surveillance, blah, blah, blah. But they abuse it for all their own demonic purposes or hatred for people the surveillance network wants to harass. Okay, so like if someone files a complaint against a cop, someone sleeps with a cop's wife, blah, 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 uh, they could put them on the list. My buddy had to sign a confidential informant agreement with the sheriff's department, he said, and also they had uh, full agreements to never talk about the program or anyone involved in it. Uh, he was dead roughly one month, maybe, maybe two at the most, but I think it was a month, month and a half most, uh, after he told me this, and from then until now, I've had to file police reports after they killed my children's animals, slice up my car's steering wheel with knives, uh, vandalize vehicles, uh, vandalize my house, break into my house, I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, let's see, you know, like I said, you know, I'll go to watch a movie with my daughter, come out of the movie theater, and they break into my car and slash up the steering wheel with knives, and I come out into the car, and even though I know what's going on, and it's not even a big deal to me, because I... Honestly, I'm a tough guy, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've never had a problem street fighting, and I've knocked out people twice my size very easily. Most of the people involved in this, they really are pussies. So, like, if you go to the gym, work out a little bit, hit a, a punching bag, you could knock out 95% of these people very easily. But the thing is, they don't engage like that. And I'll, I'll tell you another trick he told me uh, quickly, too, but let me go back to this first. Uh, so I go to the movie theater, I come out, they slice up my steering wheel with knives, and my daughter's in the car and she's scared to death, you know. So it wasn't fair to do that to my daughter and this program was never intended for that. So these people are way out of line and you know, they feel that they're above the law because under this program they're actually allowed to break into people's houses, to break into cars, to do certain things and they call it in the name of surveillance and stuff and they're, you know, and they, they're trying to be the person that's so helpful to the community and the needs of this type of surveillance, you know, whatever justification they can have, but it's a bunch of crap. But anyways, like I said, I can stand toe to toe with any, but the thing is, is that um, if I can stand toe to toe easily with any of these people, but the thing is, if I scrap with one of them, they're actually taught, he told me they're taught to, if somebody gets violent with them, they're taught to fall down and make sure they rub their arms on the ground, you know, or their face or something to get scratches and then call the police, act like this person's being psychotic, and then show the cuts and wounds to give higher charges so they can throw them down in the jail, then they have to bail out and the family thinks they're crazy, and then they can go work on the family, like I said, to go psychologically, uh, go to the family and say, hey, we're really worried about him, he's violent, he hurt this person, he's saying he didn't do it, you know, and he's talking about people uh, surveilling him and stuff, you know, and that's how they come up with the lies and they get some of the family to work against their own family members by doing this. Um, one thing I forgot to mention also is that with their surveillance program, not only do they monitor your cell phone and turn that into a roving bug anywhere you go, but they monitor your home. Also, that's why when you talk about going somewhere, uh, the information is sent out for others to, to already be there. They, they want to arrive before you if they can, uh, but if they can't, uh, they'll just come later. I, and then I left my cell phone number for the man. I felt really worried about this guy. 
And uh, so that's why I wrote that quick uh, message to him. But okay, so we're gonna go over this again. Um, and this is some other notes on it. Um, to understand truly what gang stalking is and the origin of it, um, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's by the Sheriff's Department coordinated by all them with their informants and different civilian people and stuff that they employ for these tactics. It's state to state um, with, with through all the Sheriff's Departments coordinating this so they can follow you from each state to state. And they can just call ahead and tell the guys, hey, here's what we like to do. We like to cut a steering wheel. Um, so then one of those cops will come out and cut a steering wheel. And it's actually as easy as they don't need your keys or anything. They can just call the locksmith. Hey, his VIN number is V3, V5, bait, blah, blah, blah. Guy types it in and he can uh, uh, copy a key right from your VIN number, give it to the individual. They go out and they cut up your vehicle and they got the VIN number and all these, uh, I mean the key to get in your car and all these things uh, to harass you. Uh, the informants always have, they have marked license plates for them. Uh, so that uh, if they're ever pulled over, other people scan their plate, they know that they're in an investigation working for the Sheriff's Department, nobody will pull them over so they can literally, uh, uh, you know, do all kinds of illegal things. I'll give you an example. My neighbor girl, her name is Amber, and she sits out in her vehicle, smokes meth, and drinks vodka all day long, constantly. And she get, does buys right out in front of my house and things, and she knows they won't do anything because she's the Sheriff's Department. Uh, there's another guy, Bill, a few houses away. He's the same thing. He'll enter my house when I leave and do different things. And he has the right to do that through these people. They work through the program. So uh, Amber's sister actually tipped me off the one time and uh, told me that Amber had put a camera up for 24 hours surveillance in my household, you know, and then she gave it some money. And um, so she's got a camera watching directly across my house. And it's not even her house. It's, you know, her parents don't even like it because she's a meth head. So she has that. So she's driving around the public all the time. Now the sheriff's department, obviously, she's not supposed to be able to sell narcotics and you know all these things, but she does. And you know, obviously, they don't care. Nobody's gonna care. You know, if you're uh, kind of a prostitute for the sheriff's department, they'll let you commit crimes and get away with things. Uh, one thing to remember about sheriff's departments, law enforcement, and different things: there's a lot of good cops and there's a lot of bad cops. Uh, you know, they're actually taught when they're beating somebody down to say quit resisting and through the videos you can see some of the times that is justified and many times that isn't. Now with cameras you can record a lot of these things. But the other thing too is I go to the gym a lot. Uh, I'm 45 years old, a grandpa, and I can still put up almost 400 pounds. That's why I said I'm not scared to scrap with anybody. Um, um, but at the gym, a lot of the people, you know, you can always get steroids through the cops. Okay, I know this personally. And uh, so if you wanted steroids, you can get them through the cops and they're using the steroids. Well, this is a felony thing. All of the United States steroids are a felony. So they're okay to commit a felony using the steroids. You know, you see how the doors open up in different areas. And when you're justified under these surveillance programs and you think you're doing a great job for your community, even though you're using felony steroids, but the bad guys are these guys. So you're going to do some techniques that are not only gray area, they're downright illegal, you know. And uh, that happens all the time. So the people like Amber and these different people, or if I go into the gym, uh, you know, there's just tons of people. Uh, there's a guy, Bill, you know, a few houses away, same thing, does things, and uh, he'll damage house and vehicle and things when I leave. And he's right in the area, so they use people closest at their home. Um, you know, this Dave guy likes to badmouth me through uh, different people uh, within, like, uh, religious activities or church or things like that. Uh, Melissa, Lindsay, the line goes on and on and on. They get a few bucks and they turn informants and then they coordinate with these other people. And it, it's just really a sick mixture of individuals that many of them are selling drugs and committing crimes themselves. But they kind of have the okay, not written or anything, uh, but they're not going to get arrested because one, their license plates are marked, so they won't pull them over. But two, um, uh, you know, they're not supposed to be doing these things, but obviously when they're doing all the work for them, they're allowed to do these things. So I don't want to get stuck on that yet. Um, so Amber across the street, put a, uh, her sister told me, uh, put a video camera to watch my house 24 seven. So she uh, 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 is valuable to them because she can be around me all the time because I actually live here. Uh, they lie to civilians and offer money uh, to other people's homes and this it works with different ways like if they suspect drug dealing stuff too They can go talk to a homeowner and say hey, can we set up a camera? 
blah, 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 or can we, you know, use your house for a time because we're doing this operation and such. And that's, that's real common. Uh, and they'll put surveillance equipment in your house, listening devices and the whole uh, works too. They have every capability to be able to do these things. If you have an iPhone, the one thing to remember is the easiest way is, you know, they, they can actually, uh, there's like different viruses and things and spy stuff that can go into your phone through the cellular network, but if they have physical access, it's best. But if you reset on iTunes, especially from like a library computer or anything else, that does clean your computer or clean your phone uh, just as good as brand new and it starts back up. But all your phones are identified. So Apple knows when you go online, you use Safari and you use different things, you use Google and stuff. When that phone goes into um, a certain website or whatever, that not it's not only just IP address, but they can tell that this iCloud account belongs to this person. You know, it's number 5369, blah, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. So there's always a digital signature to all these things. Um, but the best way, like I said, reset, do a full factory reset of your phone on iTunes, and that'll, you know, make it totally clean for a short time until they can uh, corrupt it again. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, Bill, the neighbor guy, has gone into my house, broke things in my garage, and stole things and stuff, and he's another drug addict, smokes weed, and I actually turned him in because he was taking advantage of an elderly man, totally ripping him off, stealing his money, stealing tools, and forcing him to, um, uh, and he uh, was forcing him, the guy, to give him payments to fix his own house, and then he was trying to get the guy to give him that house. Uh, so I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars, so I went to the county and turned him in, and right away, uh, he was the guy that was told that I had done that, so they put him on the list, uh, you know, as an informant and as one of these surveillance people uh, to come against me. So he has a hatred for me, so he loves doing this. And, uh, you know, he's done other things too, like uh, throwing lemons and things and, and eggs and, and rotten fish and sardines in my car and stuff like that. Uh, they work with different lock and key shops, also key smiths for entry into all your homes or come... Uh, combination type items, you know, safes, whatever they can get into easily. And safes, just so you know, when you buy a safe, if it's a combination or something, they always put codes on the safe, so all the sheriff's department does is call the safe manufacturer, gives them that code, and then right away they give them the combination to open your safe, so your safe isn't even safe any longer. Um, the same with the, uh, like I said, the if, if they want to get into your car to harass you, they can have a key cut right from your VIN number, and then your house, the people can come out, pick the locks in your house or whatever. They have full access to this. This is the sheriff's department. They, you know, claim it for the legal use things, and that's what it's intended for. But it's misused by these people that think they're above the law, and they're really sadistic and uh, causing problems to many people. You know, but you figure too. You know, let's say you have, if you look up Freemasonry police and Freemasonry police badges and things on Google, you'll see pictures of Freemason police and they'll be like Master Mason from Chicago and they'll have the Masonic uh, board and stuff. It's all Luciferian doctrine. They study the teachings of Albert Pike and everybody I've always known, they wanted me to be a Mason. All of those guys read the Satanic Bible, different Aleister Crawley books and tons of stuff on Albert Pike and magic, witchcraft and all these different things. So you gotta remember some of these individuals that are in law enforcement, they're probably Freemasons and then they also study Luciferian doctrine and do satanic rituals at Masonic lodges. And you can Google all this stuff and I can give you full documentation from their own books, okay? And, uh, and uh, then on top of that, they jack themselves up with steroids. So they think that you're slave, they're master, and that's why when the beatings get out of hand sometimes, I, I, I'll, I'll give any cop credit that, you know, if they're on a police chase and they're running after somebody, the adrenaline's high and they're grabbing that person, they might rough them up a little bit. And anybody could do that. I have no problem with that. But when you see videos of them torturing and beating people and allowing their police dogs to rip into people and sick them on them on purpose and stuff, um, that's, that's a whole different uh, category. So the demonic... Uh, ac actions of these individuals that are doing certain things in Luciferian doctrine, satanic rituals, and part of a fellowship of a bunch of idiots, and then they also go and um, jack themselves up on steroids so they're uh, 
their emotions and different things are, are out of control, that's when they rage and that's when they hurt people. Um, so it, it's pretty sad. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, okay, I talked about the uh, Keysmiths and stuff, the uh, um, lock and key shops, yep. Uh, all they need is your car VIN number, their locksmith friends will copy key open the car. Uh, let's see. So if they mess with your car a lot, that's the thing is like if you drive to another state, they just call ahead and then that other state does their dirty work for them and they're all, you know, bodies and sickness in this whole uh, deal. Uh, so I told you about going to the gym and many people have told lies, lies about me and slander my name to make people at the gym, you know, to isolate me and have people try not to talk to me that much or think that if I do talk to them, I'm trying to hit on young girls or I'm trying to, uh, I might be a possible rapist or, you know, I'm a felon or things which are total lies, but they'll say whatever, you know, if they know about the individual, they're going to tell them things that relate best to that person being turned off by having communication with somebody else that's on the list and being targeted for the surveillance. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, and then I was just going to tell you, like, you know, the funny thing is, is like, you got to remember these people, you know, that are going to Masonic Lodges, studying Albert Pike, Satanic Rituals, Luciferian Doctrine, and you can Google all this and see it in their own books. The cops using steroids, their violent brut police brutality. There's cops on YouTube t telling that, uh, uh, that they were actually trained to say quit resisting while they are uh, abusing somebody and brutalizing someone and assaulting someone illegally. And these people too that are following you around, like I said, if you go grab them or you push them, they're going to do like on the NBA and fall down and skid their arms on the ground and stuff so they can hopefully try and show some blood or something, but they want to show more than just, oh, he pushed me. They don't want a disorderly conduct. They want an assault with some damage so that you have to go to jail, get bail. They can go to your family, tell them they're worried that you're violent, so they're going to watch them, you know, and that they can work through that, okay? So everything's projected ahead to cause as much chaos against you as they can. Um... So like even, even, you know, with a cop, the prosecuting attorney tells the cops what to say. So when they go into court, the prosecuting attorney meets with them and tells them like a little puppet what to say. Uh, and uh, for the best possible chance of winning the cases. So even if it's not the truth, that's what they say. And I'll give you an example. Uh, if I punched myself in the face and uh, was bleeding and rubbed the blood over on your hand. I grabbed your hand, I punched myself, and I was bleeding, came up to you, rubbed, my uh, rubbed your hand with my blood on it, fell in on the ground and said, help, help, he just assaulted me, he's trying to kill me, blah, blah, blah. The cops come show up, you've got blood on your hand. You tell him, no, he's full of crap, he came up rubbed that blood on me, and you're bleeding, and you play the victim. When you go to court, you're going to lose. Even though you were innocent, you're going to lose. So the prosecutor's going to come in and tell the cop to say, hey, you know, I seen him, you know, kind of grab the guy sideways, about, you know. So the story changes quite a bit. So you got to remember that. A lot of people that satanic ritual abuse and different things uh, from the Masons and Freemasons and Satanists and different things, when they go to turn this in, if they turn it into the wrong cop that's actually a Freemason and doing satanic rituals and Luciferian doctrine and doing these things through the lodge, the higher level uh, members, Obviously, that person is going to get blacklisted and they're going to try and do absolutely nothing about this that they can. I felt bad. There was a girl on a line that was a satanic ritual abuse and she was trying to get her story out there and they had uh, started gang stalking her and that's how they work, you know, so... If you want to come against them and things, you know, this, these are things you have to deal with. And like I said, even if the highest man of the land, let's say Trump decided to take a look at this, right? Which somebody very high should. The cops are going to cover their tracks and come up with informants that are going to lie and slander you and put you in a position where the cops are like, hey, we listen to, we have a confidential informant that's a very reliable witness. We've used many times. And he said that this person's a violent gang member. He said that this person's a violent rapist. He said this person might have ties to a terrorist network. That's why we're investigating and surveilling them. That's how they cover the tracks. Uh, with the Sheriff's Department coordinating the systematic 24-7 surveillance stalking, 
They're able to trail you from city to city and state to state. I already told you that. Um, and it's really easy. It's just a phone number to another police department. And they have computer networks and things, so it all goes out, alerts, and whatever they want. Um, other countries do the same thing also. Um, the illegal things that the gang stalkers have done to me personally, and this is where it's illegal, so they're supposed to be able to surveil you and psychologically keep you confined and controlled, uh, but they're not supposed to do illegal things against you, and these people aren't supposed to be using illegal narcotics and selling drugs and doing things themselves, but they do. Um, so breaking into my home, you know, I've had a document coming home and they'd let animals out running around my house and stuff out of lock cages and things and thought that was funny. And, and uh, many different things like that. Lots of, you know, dead animals and stuff. Uh, lie to people and say that I'm a felon, slander me, and totally, completely lie, even saying that I was a child molester to other people. Um, uh, breaking in my car, slashing the steering wheel, uh, uh, damaging the paint, slashing tires. I think I've had... This has been going on for a while now, so, but I mean, probably, I think five or six, at least, it's somewhere around that, it's at least five, okay, tires actually stabbed and slashed, and like I said, the vehicle, the, the, um, uh, break into the vehicles, cut up the steering wheel with knives, um, you know, you park your car somewhere, not only do they drain the battery, but they will actually drain the battery completely dead, take the battery terminals off and pull them backwards so you know that it's not possible that like the battery went dead because obviously the battery cables are often bent back up. Um, I've had razor blades in my shoes. Go to put a shoe on, all of a sudden I feel something, pull it out, tip it over and I've got razor blades in my shoes. That's happened three times. Uh, glass in my dryer, somebody took a bunch of light bulbs and I had a load of clothes in the dryer, and while I was gone, they were in my house, went into the dryer, and the broken glass went along with my clothes and stuff. And constantly breaking things of mine too, you know, within the house, outside the house, in my garage. I would leave the garage, and then I go, I can't even drive into the garage because things in the garage they would take and break and throw inside there. Uh, the surveillance cameras, they would break those cameras. And the worst thing that's happened to me, um, is I was downtown and there was a lot of times where I'd park in a parking ramp and I'd go downtown and stuff. So I'd go park in the parking ramp and you know, they know your movements and things. So I go in and park in the parking ramp and I go and all of a sudden a brick um, had came off the parking ramp and it almost hit me in the head. It would have killed me. It landed probably maybe two feet from my head. A full brick was thrown down at me I had actually ran over to that ramp and I ran up those stairs and I was going to destroy the person that threw that brick at my head. I mean, that's when I was actually uh, targeted to be hurt bad or killed. It nearly hit my head. It was about this far away. So I ran up there and like I said, I'm not scared of these guys. I think they're pussies. And, uh, you know, I go to the gym, I work out, I can street fight really well. I follow Christ now, and I want you to know that that's another comfort, too, is a lot of people uh, aren't going to, and that's not your thing. But I want you to know that that is something for me, and it's comforting, too, because you can see the evil of these people and the demonic activities that they're doing uh, when you're into the scriptures and stuff, because it's everything opposite of good. You know, they're really trying to systematically break you down, isolate you, destroy your finances, destroy you. They don't give a shit about your children or anybody else, okay? They want you in the end to commit suicide. And my buddy, who was magically dead after telling me this about a month and a half later, um, he told me too, he said that was the ultimate goal. And the thing is that they would actually have parties. And he said, you know, one of them he went to when they celebrated. But anyways, he told me, you know, they would party and get together and everybody would high five and they'd be all happy that somebody had taken their own life. And then they just, you know, stay on that list and the same thing's coordinated. So the demonic activity within the hearts of the people that are within this program, you know, like I said, some of them start out really thinking this is good, but then they feel above the law and the evil sets in and they're doing very evil, hateful, wicked things against people to try and destroy them, you know, whether it be their minds or their social life or uh, different ways of them. So, 
um, you know, that's the sad thing about it. And even those people too, they know that they never want to be on the list. So that's why you have a hard time having anybody come forward. So I feel very blessed that my friend Josh had told me those things. I miss him very dearly. You know, things to ease your mind, getting involved with like maybe a church group or something, even if that's not your thing, <clears throat> they will talk to the church and badmouth you and, and tell all kinds of lies too to get people in the church to to um, be cautious of you. But the thing is, is they can't get to everybody. And if you're around people and you're listening to some of the Bible and stuff like that, it's really good. And if you if this has really bothered you too, I would ask you to listen to an audio Bible of the New Testament, and you'd be surprised. Some of that can change your life, and it can give you a little bit of comfort. Because you're going through hell and the tools they're using are demonic and, and a lot of these guys are doing satanic rituals, Luciferian doctrine. And like I said, all you have to do is Google Freemasonry, Albert Pike, who is their big hero guy, and his books. And the Luciferian doctrine, the satanic practices, the satanic rituals, these are real. I used to dabble in the occult, that's how I knew these guys. I was, you know, when I had problems before too, I remember... Um, I knew like Josh and stuff and we'd hang out a lot and stuff too, but I was dabbling in the occult and when I was asked to be a Mason, you know, they were really offended when I didn't want to be. But when we talked about these things before and, and you know, they would actually do like blood rituals and different things um, with birds, with, you know, rabbits or different animals and then with goats and things and it actually, but just the specific, specifics of this and gang stalking is it's the exact same type of thing they do to surveil somebody, a high-level drug dealer, a terrorist suspect, you know, this and that, or they'd surveil somebody that uh, they suspect that the husband might have killed the wife, but they have to get proof of that, you know, so they're monitoring their phone mails, they're following them constantly, where they're going, GPS locations, and triangulating everything and using different algorithms to come against these people. It's the same thing, but this way, they're using the exact same tools that are available through law enforcement in a perverted way to harass you, to try and isolate you, manipulate you and your movements, and then ultimately, it a lot of people commit suicide from this. So it's a very sick, sick thing. And a lot of individuals involved in it are sick individuals themselves. And even if they start out with the right intentions, being around those type of sickos, they start to become the sickos themselves. So anyways, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, this video, you know, my heart was moved because, like I said, I watched a video of this guy that it really bothered him. So I left him a long message and even my phone number to contact me because he's going through this. So I hope he finds some comfort and it'll fill in areas that he's been suspecting already. And once you realize that it's a coordinated effort, government funded and run by the sheriff's department, and it's almost exactly as the same surveillance tools, techniques, stingray uh you know, and different uh, tools that they use to monitor and follow people that are suspected of illegal activity. They're using this on civilians, you know. And these cops, you just like a cop has an unwritten rule not to tell on another cop. It's, it's the exact same thing. These guys actually uh, sign agreements and there's confidential informant agreements and things. And they'll actually have, you know, know that, hey, you can never talk about this other other people involved or you could get on that list. So anyways, um, I hope that is helpful to many of you, and I didn't realize this was going to get this long. It seems like every time I do a video, it gets longer than I intended. But uh, I'm, you know, a victim of the same thing right now and dealing with this myself. The hatred for me is because of my love for Jesus Christ also, and I proudly preach and proclaim the gospel, and I read my Bible, and I pray, and I love people, and I identify the occult. I actually take the satanic Bible and show people the satanic ritual. <laughs> an adoption of these different things to do that. These are my dogs in the house. They've been quiet and good so far. But anyways, I'm going to get going. If you get a chance, check out some of my other videos. I want you to know that I care about you and you're not alone. And I think we should uh, start a group. Zoe, Zoe, my dog is pushing the camera. I think we should start a group. Come here, Zoe. Come here. Come here. I think we should start a group um, to go against this and really... Uh, so other people don't feel isolated and alone because it's not fair. And like I said, whatever perverted ways they think they can justify doing this, there are certain ways to do things and the intentions of why that program even originated. And now it's perverted. And when they're going illegal routes and doing things that are illegal against you, uh, this is law enforcement actually doing that. So that's not right. And that has to stop. 
But anyways, you guys take care, and I don't know what angle the camera's at now, but hopefully it didn't get off too much, so thank you.